Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Oh, my goodness. I'm so happy to see you all. Oh, my gosh. If you guys want to turn on your cameras, I love seeing everyone's face. It would be just so cool. Hello, everyone. Hello, yeah. Jessica, Emily, Susan, Elise. Oh my goodness, everyone is here. Sean. <laughs> oh my God, Kate and Dee. Oh wow, hello everyone. I'm so happy to see you all. And hello, Lauren. You guys, um, it is National Dog Day. Did we know that it's National Dog Day? Mm hmm. Um, that's why we're all here. Surprise. No. <laughs> um, how many of you have dogs? Because I got one right here for you. I got my little angel. Happy dog day. <laughs> Dee, I know you have a little fluffy baby too. Um, <laughs> So exciting to see you all today. Thank you so much for coming. And thank you for waiting. I was just waiting to see that everyone could join in time for uh, the real start of this. So I am always so humbled to see so many of you um, come to these master classes that I do. And I love to do them. And I would love to know if you could just put in the chat where it is that you're from. I know some of you are from New York. I know some of you are from the West Coast, but there's many of you who I do not know. And I would love to know where you are tuning in from. All right, we got Chris from LA, Diana from NYC, who is a 20 minute walk from me. Diana, I know. Um, Maggie from NYC, also nearby. Holly from Santa Barbara. Tessa from NYC, Lise, NYC, Derek Bushwick, yes, Molly from Tuscaloosa. Did I say that right? Uh, <laughs> awesome. Jody from Toronto, Kate from Chicago, Sarasota, and Norm from NYC, Gail from NYC, Miss. Okay, here we go. Here's another one. Um, Lisa, you're from Ontario. I don't know if I can pronounce it. It's pronounced Mississauga. Mississauga, I love it. <laughs> Amazing, and Erin from LA and Jake Coast. Okay, cool. Oh my God, so many people. Um, so happy you're here. We're all here to learn a little bit about how to better connect with people on Instagram and specifically people who are from um, the other side of the equation. You're all artists here. And while it's exciting for you to be connected to so many other artists, it's also really good to connect to people who are movers and shakers on the other side of the equation. I can't stress enough how important it is for you to have your community of fellow artists following you. But I also think it's so important to post effectively so that you can connect to galleries, curators, and collectors. And that is what I'm going to show you how to do today. Now, before I get into my presentation, is there anything you want to share? What are you so excited to learn today? What is kind of the highlight of what you want to learn today? And just put it in the chat. Okay, I see a lot of people typing. Should ask yes or no questions. But I love, I'm here for you. I'm waiting. Um, how to get galleries to follow me. Okay, there's definitely an answer here. 
um, how to use Instagram. Jody, you, we, we're going to get you just tip, you know, touching the tip of the iceberg here because Instagram is big. So we're going to do our best, Diana, to get people other than artists to find you. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Okay. And out of everyone here, um, who feels that they have more artists than anyone else following them? Put me in the chat. <laughs> okay. Sean Capone says, how to present documentation videos of my work and share them through DMs. Oh, I like that. And Sean Furlow says, more exposure on Instagram and more clients. Yes. Okay. How to get attention from whom? Oh, artists and collectors. Very good. Okay. So normally, uh, so I'm going to dive into my presentation, but I want to share with you um, how I normally do things is I talk about uh, four steps to achieving anything that you want, really setting your intention, um, putting, uh, just being very clear with your mindset then you can be ready to do your presentation and then you can take the action that you need to take. Now, while I normally take this approach and teach each of these four steps, for the sake of time, I'm gonna breeze through um, to the presentation and action portion, but I want to just quickly touch upon intention and mindset for today. Everybody's intention is to connect with other people. And while it is, what I'm hearing is that you want to connect to these people, a lot of you think that you're ready for these galleries, for these collectors, for these curators to follow you first, or that you want them to find you. And I want to switch this a little bit because you need to connect and a connection takes place between two parties. So while yes, they can find you and I'm gonna show you how you can post and what you can do to do that. You shouldn't underestimate the power of finding them and engaging with them yourself. And I'm gonna talk about that in this presentation as well. Furthermore, when it comes to mindset, I just want to remind you all that you're all artists. You're all creators. You make something that no one else can make. No one else can make it. Even if you're making a work of art representing uh, the same thing as someone else is representing, it's so, so different because of your perspective. And your perspective is something that you have gained through your life experience. And it is so important for you to understand how valuable this is so that you can share this with everyone. And the mindset that I want you to have is that the more you give, the more you're going to receive, right? And what I want you to give on social media, on Instagram is information about your artwork and sharing information about yourself and you. So here I am breezing through the intention and mindset and let's get into the presentation portion. So let me share my screen here. And there we go. I can't believe it's August. Ah, okay. So first of all, I just want to tell you who I am. What do I do? A lot of you know me, but a lot of you might not. So I was working in the New York City art world for 15 years before I founded this company. I like to think of myself as one of my very first clients described me as kind of like a guidance counselor for the art world. I really, really hated to see artists get the runaround all the time. I watched it happen every single day and it was terrible to watch. And I also worked for, you know, 
I worked for some amazing people, but then I worked for some people who I wish um, were, were doing something else <laughs> um, because they didn't make anyone feel good. And so I realized that all of a sudden with the internet, because you could connect to anyone and everyone, artists had so much more power than they had in the past. All of a sudden you could really connect to anyone and everyone. And I thought, you know what, let me give it a shot. I have so much guidance for you guys. And I think that there is so much opportunity in the art world. After all, let me tell you, it's a multi-billion dollar industry, okay? And what we keep hearing over and over and over again is that it's hard to be an artist. If you're gonna be an artist, you're gonna be a starving artist. And this gets into our mindset. And this is toxic information that is not true because in my years working in the art world, I have written checks to artists for a lot of money and you might not even know their names because you don't have to be as famous as Jeff Koons to make a comfortable living in the art world, okay? So that's me. And you can learn more about me on my website, which is the theartistadvisory.com. So today we're gonna learn three ways to upgrade your Instagram profile that um, are going to ensure that people are not skipping it, right? That they're following it. Uh, three of what I think are the most effective types of Instagram posts. And I'll tell you now which posts you should not post uh, if you do not want uh, to attract just more artists, which again, I can't underestimate the power of community of being connected to a lot of artists. But the one post that you should not post I didn't even advertise I was going to tell you this. Do not post process photos. That is strictly technique and usually technique is something that only artists really care about. Now, three actions you can take on Instagram to connect. So learn what steps you can take to be more proactive at connecting online, right? So here we go. In your profile, and I'm using uh, Linda Mann, who was, who's a client of mine, uh, but I'm so, so proud of her. So I'm using her as an example. Linda, if you're watching this, thank you. <laughs> um, okay. I always say one of the most important things is to use a photo on your profile that is exemplary of what you do. Here's the thing, when people are interested at all in you or your profile, the first thing they see usually is, you know, if you click this button on your profile picture, they're going to have a little drop down of all the people who uh, Instagram will suggest, uh, you know, will suggest that you follow after you um, you follow somebody's, you know, this profile, right? So after somebody follows Linda's profile, Instagram automatically suggests other profiles for them to follow. And this is kind of the number one way to get follows. Uh, and really, the thing is, you can't totally control if you're going to pop up when somebody follows someone else. But this is an example of why the profile picture is so important. Because when somebody follows another artist who you happen to interact with a lot on Instagram or a gallery or another profile that is like yours, they're gonna be, your, your profile will be suggested to them. And only your profile will, picture will be the one thing they see visually. So they need to understand that you're an artist. So I've always instructed artists that I work with to post a picture of them and their work. So it's clear that you're an artist. If it's just a picture of you, we don't know what you do, right? So 
to grow your profile, the best thing is to post a picture of you and your work so it's clear that you're an artist. So people who are looking for artists or artist accounts to follow are going to be alerted to look at your profile. And I want to let you know that while this picture looks really, really small, it shows up in so many places. When somebody shares one of your posts in their stories, when um, you pop up on the Explorer page, when you are um, being, when your story is being reposted by someone, what's really important is that they see this profile picture. So I can't stress it enough. The next thing is you want to make sure that your elevator pitch is in your Instagram profile. What is an elevator pitch? I mean, we're on our phones. We're not in elevators. What are you talking about, right? <laughs> okay. So an elevator pitch is basically a quick line that describes your intention, um, the concept behind your work, right? So for Linda, it's easy to understand what her work is about after you read this elevator pitch. And the elevator pitch is always painting the dramatic from life, never from photos. So instantly from two seconds, you understand, or maybe that was three seconds, you understand what her work is about. You know that she paints from life and you know she's a painter. So you are intrigued to look further or if you're ready into it, you follow her right away. And this is so important. If a gallery is looking at your profile, if a curator is looking at your profile or a collector, let me explain. When one of these people, I'm going to call them CCGs, right? Gal uh, collector, curator, gallery, CCG. When a CCG is looking at your profile, they need to understand what they're looking at. They do not look the same way you do at your work. You spend a lot of time looking at your work. And oftentimes you might be posting things that you hope people will spend more time looking at it rather than just getting the point right away. So what happens is you need to be a little bit more clear with them about everything. The fact that you're an artist, you want to also maybe in that profile picture, show them what your, how big your work is. Maybe you paint really small. Maybe you do something big. Maybe it's a sculpture, put that there. And you also want to make it very clear for them what your work is about. Because if a gallerist understands what your work is about right away, they're going to be able to show your Instagram profile to one of their collectors and pitch you to that collector right away. They're not going to start to uh, hesitate because they don't know what to say about you. Right. And this is what happens often. Galleries will when they are looking for artists, they are browsing Instagram. Sometimes they're even browsing Instagram when they're not looking for artists. And what they do is they might be next to their collector. A collector would walk in. They want to test the waters a little. They'll show your profile and say, hey, what do you think about this uh, artist? What do you think? Uh, they are always, you know, she paints from life and it's all about the drama, right? And that is easy for the gallerist because it's, you're making it easy for them to sell. It's easy for the curator because it's easy for them to figure out where you fit in into one of their exhibitions they're curating. And guess what? It's even easier for the collector because a collector is after the story behind the work. They are after the work visually. But if there's a story that is easy for them to connect to, it can really seal the deal, right? So the third thing on your profile that you should be doing 
is always show us a variety of images. Now, I don't necessarily mean just a variety of the type of artwork you make. Actually, it's a little, pro, it's like a portfolio of your work. So you wanna make sure it's consistent, right? Which is another reason to have that elevator pitch. But you also want to show us a little bit more than just a static image of the work itself. One common thing that I see often on artists profiles is just the flat on, you know, painting on a wall or a sculpture on a pedestal and that's it. It's a little bit difficult for people to understand looking at artwork this way. They're used to looking at something that is more interactive. Think about when you look on your explore page um, which, you know, Jody, I know you're like, wait, how do I use Instagram? Explore is where that little um, magnifying glass on the bottom left over here. And then when you click it, you get suggested posts that Instagram thinks are interesting for you, right? When you look at that Explore page, you know you want to see variety. If you see static image after static image, you're going to be bored. And so you want people to stay on your profile and to find it valuable. So you want to give them variety. Use carousels, meaning multiple image posts. Use reels. Um, use static images, but perhaps post more installation images, OK? Those are really, really important. And this is an, an important post to make for galleries and for curators that is not in this presentation, but I'm telling you anyway. So listen up. If you post installation images of your previous shows, this is great for galleries and curators to see because they will see, hey, you know what, Diana had all these amazing exhibitions and the, her work is big maybe I could borrow something. It would just look so good in my show or it would look so good in my gallery. Or I could show this to collectors because this person has an established exhibition history and I don't have to poke around through to their website to understand that. So showing people that you have exhibitions from the past installations, this is so, so important, right? So put that on your profile then it makes it easier for collectors to pull the trigger, so to speak, because they see that you have had exhibitions in the past, right? And that you're not just whoever, right? If you don't have exhibitions, you are still very important, but here's what you do. If you can take two white walls, if they can be white in your uh, space, wherever you are and install your work on them and photograph it so that you could see the installation of the work because not only is it easier for collectors, right? It's also um, easy for everyone to see what your work looks like installed because curators will understand how to put it on like in a show, what it'll look like. Galleries will understand how to put it in a show as well. And collectors will understand what it'll look like in their home, okay? That's one thing that I didn't put in this presentation, but I wanted to share with you. Now, here's a type of a post that is so, so good to make, right? And as I'm telling you these types of posts, I want you to think what would be uh, a similar type of post that you can make that would be this type of post. Now, what inspires your work? If there's something that you have seen that inspires your work, post it along with the work itself. If you're a realist painter, you might want to post you know, the item that you're painting or the person, you know, just, or the setup that you're painting along with the painting to show how real it is. 
but you also want to share your story of why you're painting something and how it connects to your intention. This is important because again, it gives the gallery a story behind the work. They can easily say, well, okay, well, Johnny Nietzsche is interested in uh, fashion and those kinds of colorways. And that is one of the things that inspires his work. Instead of just saying, well, he's clearly inspired by Joseph Albers, right? Now, obviously his gallerists know this, but let's say he was looking for a gallery. It's so interesting for a gallery to stumble upon this story. Right, so I want you to share your story, the inspiration behind your work. If there is another layer to it, meaning let's say you're inspired by fashion and you were a fashion designer. This is important to put in there. I once worked with an artist who is a Reiki healer and her work is also very, very healing. And she was very hesitant to share that she was a Reiki healer. And that is what inspired her work. But let me tell you, it is so important to be able to open up and share that because it is a great story that makes your work more understandable. And it helps galleries and curators pitch your work to collectors. And like I said, they might be scrolling, they might see something, they might even take a screenshot or show it right away to someone that they think would be interested in your work. And then they have a story that goes with it. So always put a story in the caption, okay? Next type of post is a post that spells out the themes in your work. This is actually the best thing for a curator. Just like this post is almost like the best thing for a gallerist because they understand the story that goes behind your work. In this type of post, a curator will understand the themes in your work. So they will be able to think about, okay, well, what themes uh, does Jessica use in her work so that maybe I can curate her into a show, All right? So I'm just gonna play this real, real quick for you, just so you see kind of how this artist does it. And um, this artist only needed to take one video of her work and didn't have to like do the bells and whistles and all the different shots. You don't need that. You just need to superimpose some text over your reel. And here comes. <laughs> So you could also use straight up numbers and say three themes in my work. Number one, whatever. Number two, you know, number one, um, women's bodies are amazing. Number two, um, motherhood is so exciting. And uh, number three, um, women rule the world, right? Um, maybe that's all explaining one theme, but anyway, you get the point. You could literally put the themes in your work um, one, two, three, you know, maybe you're inspired by Buddhism, um, whatever it is, and just put that in your reel. And you could also explain it quickly um, in your work, right? Themes in your work. Uh, because it also will give value in terms of information, right? This is an effective type of post, right? Third effective post is for your collectors exclusively. Now, I want to know how many of you do this already, where you post your sold work, because collectors, they might be interested in buying your work, but they 
have herd mentality. We all have herd mentality. If we know that somebody else has done it, we're more likely to do it ourselves. So this is a reel that I actually put together in like two seconds with stationary images that I uh, snapped off of a carousel reel from uh, Kenny Forbes's site. Kenny, if you're here, hello. Thank you for uh, letting me snap this from your Instagram. Um, and I superimposed some text over it. So I just want you to watch this. <laughs> So it doesn't matter how long ago you have sold this work. It could have been from like ages ago. Um, just put it on there. The only important thing is that you have it sold. If you do have a picture of it installed, which one of my favorite things to do is to tell artists to email their collectors and see if they could get some installation images. Uh, because also it will inspire the collector to remember that you exist and to look at your website or to see your available work if they're interested in adding to their collection. But what's exciting is if you get these good images, you can do this. If the images you are getting from your collectors are not so great, you could just post images of the work itself and have a stationary image of the work in your reel and that says, oh my gosh, so excited. This one is in New York. This one's in Philadelphia. This one's in LA. Um, and it's so cool to do this because if you have this little disclaimer in the beginning, which I have in this video, because I know some of you might be thinking this, you're like, eh, isn't it too boastful? It's not too boastful. If you say, I have to pinch myself, my work is in collections all over the world or whatever it is, right? In so many collections. But it's really, really good for collectors to see this. They're more inclined to spend with you when they see others have spent with you. It feels safe to them. It's also very good for galleries to see this because if a gallerist sees that you're selling work, they see it as a possibility for them to make money by representing you or working with you, right? So posting that type of post is really, really good. Now, let me tell you some of the actions you can take. Oops, I don't want this to play right away. Some of the actions you can take uh, that will get things moving. Right. I'm going to breeze through these actions real quick, but I also want to tell you it's so important. This is an action I did not put on. Okay. It's a bonus action. And I said this a little bit in the beginning. You should look up the people you want to work with, the galleries you want to work with, the curators you want to work with, and follow them on Instagram even if their profile is private, just follow them. And when they're posting and it feels authentic to you, comment, respond to their story, do something, right? Because if you are just sitting there hoping they stumble upon your profile, you're gonna be there a while. So the best thing to do is to engage with them first. Okay, but if you have these types of posts that I've showed you already, they're more likely to see what you're all about and they're more likely to follow you. And someone in the beginning said, I want to find people who um, like my work or something like that, or uh, people, maybe it was, maybe I'm mixing it up. Maybe someone just said, I want to find people other than artists. Artists are great too. I can't underestimate that. But what's really special is you, when you put your intention in your bio, and it has to do with something greater than art itself, you're going to find people 
who care about the type of work you're doing, who are really going to look, right? And you can look in their communities online and engage with them. And you can search for their communities following um, hashtags that are relevant, using hashtags that are relevant to that community. So let me go through the actions that I'm suggesting for you today. Action number one is to share others' posts in your stories. Um, now, let me show you how it's done. I just want to uh, play this for those who don't know how to do this. So you click on a, a post, you hit that little paper plane and share it to your story. You can select uh, whatever background color you want, and then you type in, um, you know, great, gorgeous exhibition, and you tag the account that you're reposting or that you're posting. And you want to make sure that you tap on it on the bottom when it comes up in those little circles. And then you can also really choose whatever background color you want. So it doesn't have to be one of those other colors. All you do is you hold down that um, one of the colors and then that field comes up and you choose the color you want. So that is one way uh, to quickly share somebody's posts in your stories. You can also, if you know, there are many art fairs coming up in the world right now, but especially in New York City, those of you who are in New York City, if there's a gallery you like, go to look at them at their booth at the art fair, take a video of their installation, make sure it looks nice, and then say beautiful installation at Gagosian. And when you tag the gallery, the gallery gets a notification. They might even repost this to their followers, some of whom are probably collectors and curators. Um, and they might see your little profile picture and go on to follow you. But also, What's special here is you're tapping the gallery on their shoulder. Or if there's a curator who curated a show that you love, you might wanna do the same thing and just tag the curator. You're tapping them on their shoulder. You're saying, oh my gosh, I love your exhibition that you curated. So many of you, you might be going to spring break in New York where the curator is there in the booth and you can ask who the curator is. You can find them on Instagram and do yeah. this. And this way you're tapping them on their shoulder and you're showing them that you're an artist. They're going to look at your profile. They're going to read your elevator pitch. They're going to see your profile picture. And that makes a connection, right? So that's one way, one action you can take. Another action you can take is to collect information from your followers using um, poll stickers and quizzes. Now, your followers are your people who are already interested in you. So if you want to weed out more of your collectors um, and, <laughs> or actually not weed out, but find more of your collectors, engage with them or um, anyone else to see what they're interested in, you can actually ask them, you can ask them, hey, which of these is your favorite? Which one do you like more, this painting or that painting and use a poll. Um, you can ask them, hey, should I do this in a different size or color um, and use uh, the quiz uh, or the poll. And if you are wanting to ask them a little bit more about your intention, uh, it, or teach them a little bit more about your intention, you can actually use the quiz like this and say like, hey, uh, what are the themes in my work? Uh, or are you familiar with the themes that I'm interested in? Or what themes am I interested in? And list the themes and list you know, three of them. And then the fourth choice is all the above. And then it's an easy, quick way for them to get information about your work, but also as far as the algorithm goes, it's so important to do these polls and questions uh, and quizzes because it, engage, it makes them engage with you, right? And when you're engaging, you're gonna show up on each other's feeds more often. 
Now, I don't know if you guys have heard of this or if you're thinking about this, but there was this announcement from Instagram that it is no longer an image sharing app, it's a video sharing app. And while they are transitioning to do more video, they want to be more interactive. But also I have friends and artists that I've worked with who have accounts that are very high. They're over 40,000, over 100,000. And they still post images, multiple image posts, and they do well still, okay? So that is, slowly transitioning, but nobody's really seeing the impact that much. Instagram did have a little bit of a dip in the algorithm for regular posts when they first announced this, but it's no longer the case. So don't fret, post those images, okay? I, don't, I should have mentioned it earlier, but anyway. Um, and the final action I want you to take and some of you here, maybe this is how you got here. I asked for your email. And what you want to do is always ask people for your email, for their email in your stories. This is so important because you never know when the algorithm feels like showing your exhibition announcement to them or, you know, connecting uh, anything to them, right? Maybe the algorithm is um, kind of ghosting them out for you. But if they have the chance to give you their email, this is great. This is how you do it. And so if you see, now this is something I got from an artist I work with, and I'm so happy for this. Nancy, if you're listening, thank you for sharing this. But this is a beautiful, beautiful tip. She said, to me and our entire class, we were in our group program, in my group program, the Artist Academy. And she goes, you know, one thing I love to do is when artists or anyone follows me on Instagram, she goes, when I see that they followed me, I send them a very nice note saying, hey, thank you so much for following me. I would love to add you to my mailing list. Would that be okay? What's your email? And sometimes she doesn't get an answer, but sometimes she gets the answer. And so artists, when somebody follows you, this is a great thing to do. But for the people that are following you now, you might want to tell them that you have a big announcement or you're going to have an open studio or an exhibition and you want them to be the first to know. So sign up with the email below and always use that question sticker because it is the most effective way to get people to put it in. Now you could, yes, you can respond to a story with a DM, right? But uh, not everyone understands that the DM is there or sees the DM. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that people do see that place where they can put their email, right? And this is great for you to take an actionable step and connect to these people. So the posts I've showed you, they're a way for you to, um, it's almost like you're when these people see you, this is what you want to show them. And these actionable steps are for you to engage with these people. But the number one actionable step that's not on here that I've been talking about this whole time is that you can follow these people on Instagram that you want to connect to and you genuinely comment and respond to them, right? respond to their stories. So when I work with artists, this is one of the biggest things that we talk about. And so I just want you all to know that I have my online group program, which is called the Artist Academy. This is going to be the uh, eighth time that I'm doing it. And it's enrolling now and it's a real live program like this. I create presentations for you. We are one-to-one, -one, but there's a lot less people in the group because I want it to stay intimate so that I can help everyone the way that they need to be helped. 
um, and guide everyone that same way. So if you're interested, I'll drop the link in the chat, but also I want you to know what the program gives you. It helps you navigate the art world and helps you build community, really achieve your goals and hold you accountable for them and up level your online presence. Everyone who goes into the Artist Academy has a new website when they come out and they also get to learn how to make all of these Instagram posts because one of the most beautiful things that this program offers is one-to-one -one weekly tech support for anyone who's in the program. So if you're like, hey, how do I even like do this type of post? Um, you can book a meeting with someone one-on-one -on -one, and it's not just someone, it's a really beautiful, wonderful person. Um, <laughs> I don't know if she's still here, but uh, it's Lauren. And she really walks you through everything. Um, and one of the beautiful things that I'm gonna do for you today is, yes, Lauren, hi. Um, I'm gonna drop the link in the chat for you. And you can learn more about it. And if you want to join, guess what? You can have 20% off and there is a payment plan option, which you can literally enroll in this course. And the for 160 something dollars, literally, okay, if you're really into it. And so it's up to you. But I think it's a wonderful way to invest in yourself. Anyway, I'm going to move on from this course. If you have any more questions about it, you can ask me. But I also want to answer any questions you may have about this presentation because I'm here for you. So I'm going to stop the share. And I'm going to ask that if you have questions, um, put it in the chat or raise your hand and I will call on you. Um, uh, OK. I have Diana, Maggie, and then that's, so far those are the only hands. So Diana, go ahead, I'm gonna unmute you. Okay. Hey. Okay, I don't know how applicable this is, but maybe it will help other people. On the questioning on the Instagram. Okay, I have to give a presentation in a couple of weeks I don't really know what to say. So can I ask on a story to sort of give them the name of the topic and say the truth? I really don't have any ideas. Can you suggest something? Or is that, Diana, does that make me look too stupid? But no, I could tell you no. Know. Diana, first of all, this is such a beautiful example of how you can really engage with your audience that you have. So you're absolutely right and using this tool to help you figure out what you can actually talk about. I, don't know. I really don't know. That's the, the truth. The That's honest truth that I don't know what to say. So you could say, hey, I'm doing an artist talk. What would you like to learn? And um, do a, you know, put up a picture of one of your paintings and then um, you can do the uh, quiz and say, what would you like to learn about this painting? No, no, What's no. in it? It's a topic that I don't know what, oh. I don't I, it's a topic. I, there's a name okay. of this topic and I don't know what to, what, it, what to say in that topic. Well, you, mm, you could it, give them options for topics, I, but if you really don't know the topic, give them some context, like show them some of the work. Right. And then say, hey, what topic should I speak about? And do the question okay. sticker. Okay. Great. Thank you. But it would be much better if you could brainstorm just a few like topics somehow and put it in the quiz. I should give them some suggestions, you mean? Yeah. Okay. Because it's so hard for people to answer open-ended questions and stories. 
Oh, okay. So if you give them some options, it's going to be much better. Okay. Was it a topic? And are there different ways to approach it now? Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Of course. Um, yeah. Maggie? Hi. Um, okay, so um, it's always good to revisit all of these things. Um, and I want to know a little bit more specifically how you think that I can or that we all can get galleries to follow us because I have to say that I am um, pretty good from from having worked with you so much Marina as um, I um, uh, I, I put stuff in my stories, I pose questions, I follow um, galleries on Instagram, I comment on their posts with words, and sometimes they like my comment, or sometimes they will even go as far as to thank me for my comment, but I, they, and the one thing I am not doing is I'm not commenting really so much on stories, which maybe is something that I need to introduce. And I definitely have gone to galleries and done, sh you know, where I've filmed them or taken pictures. And what I have gotten in return sometimes on those is they don't even, even look at, the, at my story, let alone cop, you know, yeah. let alone share it. But that's not across the board. Often they do share it or they thank uh -huh. me. But still, I'm not getting the follows, uh -huh. which, which and then how do they how will they ever see my stuff except through a reel? Yeah, so let me just take a quick peek at your profile. Um, beautiful. OK, so I think that you're absolutely right in responding to their stories more often. Okay. But here's the thing. If one, if you have, let's say, visited a gallery, um, interacted with them, you did everything possible and they're still not following you, there's literally nothing you can do to make them follow you. So you just have to move on to the next one. And so um, one of the best things you can do is before you even do, um, you know, like the hard push by um, constantly, you know, like really engaging. Just wait and engage when it feels really authentic. Right. Because sometimes they're going to be like, oh, it's just one of these fans of my gallery, right? Why would I follow them? You want to have a real connection. So on, in a way, when you respond to their stories and it feels like something really, really authentic, that is the best way to make that connection. So you're right in doing that. I wouldn't, you know, but also Maggie, do not beat yourself up because you are doing fantastic online. And it's not just the galleries that you have to focus on. Uh, think about everybody else and, um, one thing that I would suggest that you do is look into some curators who are working with themes that are relevant to your work today and engage with them first. Curators are, I wouldn't say they're like easier to engage with, but I think that they're more difficult to find. So there's a little bit less competition. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good way to describe it. Um, but it also, it's really good for you to engage with curators authentically based on the themes in your work. Okay. okay. Because that will make a really good connection. So Maggie, I know you're in New York. I'm gonna suggest that you go to spring break and you know see which curators like really care about the type of work, um, the, the themes in your work. Um, share a, a video of their booth and tag them in your story and just keep going on. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Marina. My pleasure. All right. We have three more questions and one quick one in the chat. I'm going to take this from Sean just really quick. 
Um, he's saying, what is your opinion on hiring a PR marketing agent to make connections? I think it's fantastic to hire a PR person um, or a PR company or agency, but when you have an event, right? So when you already have an exhibition, that is the best time to hire one of these people because when you hire just a PR agent and you don't really have anything timely, I mean, sure, your work technically is timely. It could be a little bit difficult. They might get you a couple of, um, uh, or you know, a few articles in lifestyle publications, and that is actually really good visibility. But overall, if you had to choose, do hire a PR agent when you have an exhibition, right? So if you can, but you have to hire them a little, like three months ahead, because at least, because a lot of their connections will be with the print um, publications and print publications need to have press kits three months ahead of the printing date or the release date. So if something comes out in May, they need it three months before then. Okay, all right, Jeff, Jessica, I am ready for your question. Sorry. Um, yes, I, my question is this. Um, I'm trying to start my video. Okay. My question is this. So um, I've had a couple of instances where I noticed that somebody is following me and I'm like, whoa, I know this person and this person is awesome. And um, like, there's, there's this big collector that all of a sudden, you know, if I said his name, you would know who it was and he follows me. And I was like, when I got that notification, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't even follow him, but I know who he is. That's amazing. So um, I messaged him and I just said, um, thank you so much for the follow. I so appreciate it. And he was like, absolutely uh, beautiful work. And that was it. So my question is when, when something like that happens, what, what would you say is a good, like, I don't even know what I want from him, but it's more <laughs> yeah <laughs> here's the thing um what you want to do is uh so if this happens again then mm -hmm. you want to send them a message saying oh my goodness or whatever like i'm thank you so much for the follow i really uh respect your collection i've heard mm -hmm. wonderful things about it um would you like me to add you to my mailing list as well so that you could get updates when I have an exhibition. Okay. Now, you've already done the, the thank you for follow thing. So mm -hmm. save it for the next one or for when you actually have something to email, say like, hey, I have an important announcement. Do you mind if I email it to you? And Oh, okay, that's so, a good idea. Mm -hmm. But also this, the first thing you wanna say to them is how you, much you respect their collection. You're happy to, um, you know, e-meet them or something like that. Okay, okay. Um, because you need to understand the perspective of the collector. They think that artists are the coolest people ever. <laughs> and they're like, oh my God, like they're so cool, but um, I need to like be in the art world and how can I do this? The only way I can do this is if I buy stuff from them. So when mm -hmm. you reach out to them, and you say, oh my, wow, you're like so cool. <laughs> this is exciting for them to hear. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. The next thing, you know, now that you've already messaged him the way that you have, what you should do is you should flag the message in your DM box so that okay. when you are ready for your exhibition, you can click or when, you know, you have an exhibition coming up or something important, you can click on the flagged message and DM him or whoever else comes up so that it's easy. Yeah. Um, and also turn on their post notifications. Mm -hmm. So when you go to their profile, you click the three dots and mm -hmm. turn on the notifications and so that you know when they're posting and you can look at it right away. So if it feels authentic for you to comment then you do comment so that you ensure that the algorithm shows their posts. Mm -hmm. 
Amazing. Thank you so much. Sure. Um, Molly. Uh, let's see. There we go. Okay. Hi. Hi. Um, so I'm very like just getting started. I've been an artist for a really long time. Um, but I'm kind of just now putting my foot out there and trying. Um, so my question may be really basic and obvious, but so I have a blog that has like a cutesy name or whatever. So when I do Instagram, should it just be my name or should I keep like this name running through everything, like all of my online identity or whatever? What is it? I muse that. Okay. I think it's okay to leave that as your handle, but on Instagram, you have um, in your profile, you can put your name, you know, Molly Nelko. Yeah. So you should definitely have that listed as your name, but you can keep using that handle. I think that's totally fine. Um, and because it's not the one thing that I would tell people to steer clear of is if your handle is literally, you know, John Smith Fine Art, but you're an artist, it makes you sound like an art gallery. But Amuse That is totally fine. It makes sense. Um, will you be posting content from your blog on there? Um, maybe. The blog is kind of set up to be like a, to go into the story of my theme of my work. So it's still art related. Um, Perfect. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. And, yeah. and I almost kind of like have an idea of like a, like a hashtag art community, you know, around the same kind of name and kind of connecting it all. Um, if that makes sense. So I really kind of want to keep that, but I also want my name to be attached to it. So the best way to have your name attached to it is going into editing your profile and putting your name there. Well, okay. you know, so, yeah, awesome. because okay. when people, uh, sure, I just want to say when people are typing in your name to message you or to tag you and they type in Molly, then you're going to pop up that way. So and if I meet somebody and they know my name, but I don't get to tell them about, you know, the blog, they could still type in my name and find me. Yes. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's Perfect. so, so important for everyone listening. If you have a different um, username than your actual name, as long as in your profile is your actual name, that's really good. But then people can find you. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Awesome. Uh, Chris. Hey, thank you uh, for hosting this. This has been uh, super informative. I feel like I've learned a lot. I'm a little inspired. Um, I have uh, a bunch of followers who are just so unresponsive and don't want to engage with me in any way whatsoever. And so in turn, I pull back and ignore them and blame them for my unhappiness. And so it's like a really unhealthy relationship, but I realize that also I need to invest time and effort and, and do this sort of work that it is work. And so if I start, if I jump in after this kind of period of dormancy, do I need to like make some sort of announcement or acknowledge the fact that I've been gone for a long time or just jump in and do it? Uh, you know, my best advice here is to jump in and do it, but consider a couple of things while you're doing that, okay? Um, also, I was totally distracted by Sean Frillo's dog um, while I was listening to your question, but I got your question. Sean, your dog is the sweetest little angel. Okay. Oh, uh, look hi. Yeah. Yeah. So cute. Okay. Um, it's National Dog or International Dog Day. Okay. I'm going to get to your question. So, Chris, you do want to jump right in because what is going to happen is um, you when you post for the first time after a long time, then you um, your followers get a little notification that says, hey, Chris is posting for the first time in a while, look at his post. So you could make an announcement 
if you wanted to. But you could also just post something that is in line with what you want to do. If you make an announcement, it will surely get the bell that goes with it because it will give that push to all of your followers, that notification. Um, I would also go through your profile and archive any images that you feel are not aligned whatsoever with what you're doing. When you're archiving an image, you're not deleting it, but you're cleaning up and streamlining your profile. And then the third thing I would do is use the polls and the, and the quizzes in your stories to sort of underline your new thing that you're doing, right? Because you are, from what I remember fa from fashion photography to art, yeah. So what you want to do is you want to uh, get your followers to engage by pressing those buttons and you say like, hey, um, did you know that I was an artist? Oh my God, what? Or no way, <laughs> right? And say like, yes, I'm obsessed with A, B, C, and D theme. And then you could post some images of your work. And when you post images of your work, you can post one on top, one on bottom in your story and have a little poll over here that points up or down and be like, which one is, do you like more? You know, just to get them to look and engage. And then you can do um, a quiz that says, you know, would you, um, have you ever collected art before? And one, yes, I have a bunch, two, does Ikea count? Three, you know, um, I inherited some art or four, uh, no, but I want to, right? And so you just kind of keep going that way. Oh, yeah, my pleasure. All right, does anyone else have any questions about what, the presentation was. All right. Um, are you guys, do you have some ideas of how you can post mo more effectively on Instagram, how you can connect? Do you, you know, if you do have new ideas of how you can connect to others, put a one in the chat. Oh my God, Sean, that means everything coming from you. <laughs> um, Chris has an idea, Lisa, Maggie, good, good, good. Gosh, I hope you all have new ideas. Diana, thank you, one. I hope you all have kind of new ideas of what you can post, right? But the most important thing that I want you to take away is that you teach people about your work you make a post visually interesting so that it's not just a static image. It's really hard to look at a static image on, on a phone, you know? Um, but also, I want you to know that you can make the first move too. You can click follow or whatever it is, right? You can engage um, and comment to these galleries, to the curators you want, but also, you know, look for these people who you think will understand the themes in your work, right? So um, also, oh, we have a question from Dee. Hi, Dee, okay. Um, hi, I just have a question about curators. Um, Galleries are easier to find, but in curators, I've tried to, you know, track down shows and then if I like the show, find out if there's a curator. It's super involved. Is there any other thoughts on finding curators? <laughs> well, Dee, this is such a beautiful question. And like I said, kind of earlier to Maggie, you know, curators are a little bit less competition, so to speak, because they're harder to find. Right. Um, so one thing you can do is 
Um, first of all, always look at spring break because that's a really good database of curators. Okay. But the other thing is, you know, you might be looking for curators who are independent, who are working with galleries. Start looking at bigger curators who are working at museums because they're always listed on the museum website. And if there's a museum show, the curator has, you know, front and well, you know, they're in the second row, you can find them. <laughs> and um, when it comes also to um, finding emerging curators, uh, you, you know, if you're an emerging artist, which D, you're not exactly an emerging artist anymore. But if, you know, if there's emerging artists listening, one thing you can do is you can look to see um, sometimes emerging curators curate uh, the MFA uh, studio shows uh, in you know whatever university is nearby you that has an MFA program, and that's a really good way to build a bond with someone who's just starting out. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Thanks. My pleasure. Um, Diana says, uh, should you let everyone who wants to follow you follow you, even if you look them up and there's nothing there, you just have two, two photos of themselves? Okay, so if it's clearly a, like a bullshit account, <laughs> where, sorry, I just had to say it, we're all thinking it. If it's clearly a BS account, and it's, a, they have no posts or two photos from 1999 on there, right? You can un, have them unfollow you. So yeah. when you go to their profile, you click the three dots and you click remove follower. Yeah. Now, let me tell you why this is important because with the Instagram algorithm, it is all about the numbers. So it is about the rate, uh, the ratio of engagement to your followers. So if you have followers who are never on Instagram following you and they make up five to 10 to more percent of your followers, then Instagram, they don't know that they're not always on there. That's not what the algorithm calculates. You think it should, right? But it doesn't. It calculates the ratio of your followers to your engagement. And so when they see that there's 10% of your people are never even looking at your posts, they think, oh, well, Diana's post must not be that exciting. Okay. So then they stop. They don't show as much of your posts to everyone, right? So they're called ghost followers and you have to get rid of them. And if you guys, some of you might have a lot of them, there's apps out there that you could use to remove them. And that's wonderful, but you wanna be careful which apps you give your password to because that's how you could get your account hacked. Um, so in order not to get your account hacked, the best thing you can do is uh, use two-factor authentication on your Instagram for security. So they'll text you a code before you log in from somewhere else. Uh -huh. okay, um, oh, quick tip from Sean. Um, my Instagram followers increased notably in a short space of time by participating in conversations on Clubhouse. Yeah. Um, a social media app that has great utility for making connections and getting people to look at your Insta or Twitter. Absolutely. Clubhouse is great. It's an audio based app. So you're basically talking the whole time in rooms or listening to people talk or engaging with them that way. Um, you know, a lot of you want more followers and one really effective way. Uh, so Clubhouse is definitely great, but Another effective way to gain more followers, the only thing is you do have to pay a little bit for it. You can find collection pages on Instagram where you send them a message um, and they post your um, work and tag you. And it's a page, uh, like a collection page that, or a curated page that only posts artists work, right? 
And if the work is aligned with you, they're going to post your work and people are going to, that are following that page, like it. So they're going to follow you, right? But you want to go through this presentation make sure your profile is there before you do something like that. An example of a page like that is abstract 10, like that. Oops, I sent that directly to Elise somehow. Sorry. <laughs> Let me send it to everyone. It is abstracted. Um, and if you're a realist, a big one is Blue Review, right? But you can go ahead and find more of these pages. If they reach out to you, you probably do not want to post with them because... I know. Yeah, not good. All right. So any more questions? Also, if there are any questions... Oh, Pearl, did you have a question? I can tell. Yeah, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, sorry for being so late. It was not in the plan, but it worked out that way. Um, I have a question. So my Instagram account started as something I was just putting various things in. That's before I understood how it worked. Now I, I've kind of solidified it to just be my artwork. Um, but occasionally there are other things related to my artwork that um, I want to post. And I'm kind of not sure if I should leave putting other things in that are related to art and, and have it not be exclusively artwork. Ah, okay. You know what so, I mean? I, yeah. Yeah, because you want to, well, it's so important to post not just your artwork on Instagram because you're living your life and right. you want to show what you're doing because mm -hmm. A lot of the time, you know, one art consultant that I used to work with, she said to me, I can't believe it. Every time I, <laughs> every time I send a price list to someone, they come back to me and they're like, oh my God, that artist has like the coolest surfboard or something like that. <laughs> and she's like, what do you mean? And, you know, they ended up going to the artist's Instagram page and just, you know, stalking. Um, so you know, you could occasionally sprinkle in some images that are non-art related, but, you know, as long as they're not somebody else's art onto your um, profile, but the best place to do it that's super non-committal and easy is to put it in your stories. Okay. And it's actually great to put it in your stories because you can show people how much fun you're having and how much fun you are. Um, and, you know, think about also, you know, a lot of you take for granted your day-to-day -day lives, but there are people who would be so happy to live where you live, to see what you see. So if you show it to them in your stories, um, it'll make them happy at least, but on a weird level, right, what it does is it makes them a little bit jealous and it makes them also see that, oh my gosh, well, if they are doing that, if they're living there, then they're successful and it makes collectors mm -hmm. feel more comfortable buying from you. Also, mm -hmm. they see you're a real person, not just some fake Chinese website, you know, and I'm just saying fake Chinese website. Oh, I'm sorry. That was in politically incorrect, but also <laughs> wrong. I'm sorry. What I mean is, you know, some fake international site that's siphoning money for products that don't exist, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, does that help? Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm, so I'm using my Facebook page for like everything. There's art, there's stories, there's, you know, everything that's going on. And so I sort of feel like I have an outlet for that, but, you know, to make, to spice up the Instagram account, that was like, well, yeah. how much Know what I mean? You don't want to, I don't want to lose the focus yeah. of the work. Um, Cause I think I've done well by just posting the work that I've gotten this year. I've gone up to um, 600 people in, in both Facebook and Instagram. Amazing. And, and on Instagram, I did weed out, you know, those people that, you know, you're not sure if it's like a dating service or what, all these, <laughs> these. so 
I have been trying to weed them out. I find that if you just leave them alone, they disappear too. So I'm not as concerned about them. Yeah. And I love that attitude, you know, like that point of view. Um, I think you're absolutely right. Just, you know, keep posting what makes it fun for you, because if it's fun for you to see, you can bet that it's fun for other people to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Um, we have a question from Gail or a statement. <laughs> Gail, this is a really good point. She's bringing up that she understands some people are leaving Instagram and moving to other sites like Artful. Um, Artful is an app that is like a social media networking site uh, for artists. But here's the thing. There's uh, three points I want to make about this. Number one is it's for other artists, which is great and you build your community, but it's, I don't know if there's gonna be the same amount of um, other types of people on this social media app. And also why would you leave Instagram when there's over 1 billion people using it at any given time, right? So there's that. I mean, I get it. Like it gets more narrow. So give it a whirl. But that brings me to my next point is that there have been social media startups that are different types of social medias. Um, you know, Clubhouse is one of them that has had a considerable drop in usage, but is still being used. Um, Twitch is one of them. Twitch is normally um, some place where you can stream uh, your screen or stream a video. Uh, and for a time there in the beginning of the pandemic, all of these cool art world kids would hang out on Twitch in their hangout rooms. And now that's not really a thing. So they ended up going back to Instagram more or less. And my third point is, you know, while there are all of these other sites, people do end up coming back to Instagram. So I'm going to vote for Instagram, but I also want to keep an open mind and I don't, I've never been on Artful. Go on there and see what happens and think about what you like to see on there and post those types of things. Because if you like to see it, other people probably like to see it too. Um, So uh, do we have any more questions today about anything? Or do we have any questions um, about the Artist Academy? I mean, my um, this is gonna be the eighth time I'm doing this and it's my online group program. Uh, some people here have been enrolled in it. Some people have already um, uh, or are enrolled in it and Every single time we meet, we are thinking about actionable steps to get to your goals, whatever they are. And we're really focusing on translating um, using the internet to help you navigate this shifting landscape of the art world. There's eight modules in the program. We have a module on setting goals on the structure of the art world and all the institutions, types of institutions and individuals involved. Um, on elevator, on your intention and your elevator pitch to make sure that it's present everywhere on your social media and on your website and wherever you go in person, right? There's also a module on finding your collectors, an audience that matters to you. And I also show you how you can find patrons who are big patrons of the arts. Um, another thing, is I also have a module on websites and you can build your own website. I've gone through and adjusted a website template on Squarespace. It's so easy to use. And at the very least you leave this course with a beautiful website. And then on top of that, you get to go through a social media module with me, which is updated every single time I do this course because social media changes so much. There's a module on sales and also on applying to uh, opportunities. 
And then there's two bonus modules where you meet actual movers and shakers in the art world and you show them your website and you practice your elevator pitch on them and you get to meet them. Right. Um, thank you so much, Gail. She goes, I can attest to that. I have a great website now. Thank you, Gail. Um, and Diana, you can, yeah, Diana messaged me. She's like, can I say something? You can say something. Yes. Can you hear me? Am I on? I never know. If I'm yeah. I just want to say something. I'm not being paid to say this. <laughs> I took Marina's course, I don't know, maybe, I guess about six months ago. I've been painting a long time. I've been, you know, gray hair. I've been in the art world for a long time. I never in my life thought I would be doing anything like coaching. It's not my... I don't know, I'm just not the kind that runs from one coach to another. I heard Marina give a presentation. I totally fell in love with the present with her in the presentation. And I must say, I thought the course was invaluable. I just want to say again, I'm not getting paid. I'm not getting any bonuses. I'm not getting anything. I just feel like I want to share. It was a wonderful experience. I went into this class kind of kicking and screaming. I had loved my old website, which was unusable. It was out of date. And Marina, inspiration and help. I have this website that other people seem to love a lot, not beginning to like. I also am beginning to like a little bit Instagram and Facebook. And basically, um, I feel so optimistic. And even the talk today, I mean, the wonderful thing that Marina gives you is number one, I think understanding who you are as, as an individual. I mean, I can only speak how she was with me. I assume she's the same way with everybody else. And she really wants to help us. I think she really wants her people to succeed and kind of graduate. And I think, you know, I just want to say how grateful I am. And I hope whoever has not taken this course will take advantage of it because it's a wonderful opportunity. And I don't, I just want to say that. It's my way of thanking you, Marina. Uh, that is the sweetest testimonial. Thank you so true, much. Thank yeah. you. Can I, can I add one thing to that? Please. Um, one thing that Marina does um, different than anyone else is that, which is an embellishment to what Diana just said, is that she, um, she she can't help herself even if there is a huge class and it's going on and on and on and it's taken a long time she uh focuses on each individual uh person and answers their questions i'm sure you could see her doing that here where she said let me look at your uh at your page and uh, i mean that is what she does and it's thorough and yes it is invaluable you're right. And, and it's it it's invaluable, which makes it like an addiction because <laughs> she's so smart and she's so personable and warm. And um, you know that anything you ask her will never be, you don't have to be afraid. It's not gonna be looked down upon. You can um, expose your most, um, awkward self and she will recognize it and um and help you to be better to be really be your best thank you so much maggie diana pearl nicole oh, yeah. oh my god um wow thank you i feel so good after this it's really true though true thank you yeah. And, you know, I developed this course because I was so, you know, I was approached by so many artists to give advice and I wanted to do it more effectively. And I also really care about the power of community because when you are working with these artists, what you do is you come together and you really get to know each other. You're holding each other accountable. Um, in the past, I've had, um, a course that was up to 16 people. I'm now limiting it to 10 people so that we are not there for the rest of the evening <laughs> and I get to focus on everyone. Um, so really, you know, if you're interested in taking that leap in your career and just like you know, finally getting to do something, being proactive rather than just sitting around kind of, not that you're sitting around, right? But really being proactive. Um, this is probably a great program for you. And one of the best takeaways is that you really get to set your goals. 
you get to have a strategy that puts your goals forward and yields results. And it really is a good way for you to focus. So because you're all here today, again, thank you so much for these sweet words. <laughs> I'm so grateful I got to work with you, all of you. Um, and let me just drop the link again to learn a little bit more about the program. And it's almost full. Uh, and what I did is Look, um, the cost of the program, you're probably going to sell a painting and then that's going to pay for it and you'll forget about it. But if you just are not that type of person yet, um, you can also do a payment plan. And no matter what, you get 20% off. And this discount is valid till Monday. All right. And I have four spots, but discount is valid till Monday. And here it is. Uh, you can use it either on the payment plan option or the painful option. And of course, you save even more if you pay in full. And if you use it on the payment plan option, what's amazing is that it does it for every single payment. Now, the other thing I want to tell you about this course is, yes, I'm there with you one-on-one -on -one in the group. But if you wanted a little bit more support, there's an option for you to get uh, individual meetings with me where we would meet for 90 minutes for a strategy call. And then on top of that, we would meet once for the rest of the time, once per month. So we would meet, um, it starts in September, we would do a strategy call, and then we would meet once in October November and December to make sure that you're on track and to work on any special projects that you might have. One of my favorite things is I've had so there's usually one person who I totally love working with who has an exhibition coming up and we work with them on their exhibition. And, you know, I didn't even understand that this was the case, but someone said to me, hey, I would have spent five hours writing my press release, but you did it in like half an hour. <laughs> How is that even possible? So at the very least, you save time that way. And you really get to learn how to do it the right way. I've worked in galleries for 15 years. You basically get a gallery director on your side. The only thing is I will not do things for you. I'm going to teach you how to do them yourself. Okay. because I want you to, you know, so to speak, know how to fish. So if you're interested, the link is in the chat. The discount is in the chat. It's there until Monday. You can literally start this course for less than $200. And that's with the payment plan, <laughs> right? Um, and so... If you have any questions, you can also go on my website and book an assessment call with me if you haven't already. Um, and I will answer those questions. Or if you want to send me an email, um, just respond to the email that announced the link or whatever, and I'll get back to you um, with any questions you might have. So thank you so much for coming and I hope you all have a beautiful evening and I'll send out the replay for everyone anyway. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. Bye.